Welcome to KuzaCast, where we interview some of the most influential people in tourism from around the world. My name is Graham Watson, and I'm the founder of Kuza Global. The word Kuza means a new dawn, and in 2023, we want to find out just how our guests are working towards that new dawn. Join us and subscribe to future episodes as we hope to inspire you with stories of strength and resilience in the tourism industry. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of KuzaCast in uh, in in the same vein as the last podcast I did, where I'm now going to be interviewing actual travelers, um, I'd like to welcome Heather Markell, who's a full-time travel coach. Hello, Heather. Hello. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So we also met uh, a few weeks ago in, in South Africa on, on, on one of your intrepid journeys. Um, so yeah, the way, the way we work in the podcast is I just introduce, uh, introduce yourself to the listeners and then we can, uh, then we can get into it a bit more. So just tell us about who Heather Markell is and uh, how you came to be a full-time traveler. Sure. So, wow, that's like a loaded question. So a yep. long time ago, <laughs> I was born in, uh, so, so I'm from um, New York City and uh, went and tried to live that normal life of, you know, corporate career out of college, even though uh, before all that, I lived with a host family in Normandy, France when I was 16 years old, I went kicking and screaming, ended up having the time of my life and that's the first time I really immersed into a foreign culture and I loved it. And it spurred me to study five more languages, I think, or four, I don't know, two, yeah, four more languages in college. Uh, so when I went into the corporate world, I actually initially was able to use a lot of my language skills and I loved it. Uh, unfortunately, my career became more and more domestic and dissatisfying and after more than 20 years of, you know, trying to stick it out, um, I just couldn't find another career that sounded like it was what I wanted to do. And yeah. so I began pursuing the entrepreneurial path uh, by becoming a, a certified coach. And uh, that was in 2008. And then basically through a lot of trying to stick it out and finally deciding to uh, take a career break I quit in uh, my corporate job in uh, 2017, thinking I would take a six month career break at the time. And oops, it's been six years later. Um, I'm still <laughs> traveling full time. And I just decided uh, once I realized this wasn't just a career break, I started thinking about how to monetize it. And that's how the full time travel coaching, among other things that I do, came into play so that I could work while I travel. Great. So, I mean, it's, it really sounds like you're living everybody's dream where you can travel, uh, as a career. Um, I know many people listening, uh, are in the travel industry and, you know, we do work and travel for a living, but you get to kind of live, uh, you, you yeah. I mean, the, di the digital nomad lifestyle is, I think, you know, what has really taken off. I mean, I don't think most of us had even heard that term before, before COVID hit. And now it's kind of becoming a lot more, um, a lot more doable um and even countries are offering uh digital nomad visas uh for yes. for, for people yeah yeah so i hear uh, south africa is trying to jump on that bandwagon too yes yeah yeah so i think i mean i think it is great where people can just come and, and live and, and work and you know contribute to the economy you know it's it's great you know like these little working holiday visas that uh that usually benefit uh sort of under 25s now now the sort of the older generation can benefit too yes. yeah which is yeah. great yeah i agree i mean it's it's also really inspiring that you know when i quit in 2017 my colleagues thought I was crazy. My parents were like begging me to just yeah. not do it. Um, some of my friends were like, yay, but, but it was, you know, so strange, especially for someone not in her 20s. Um, and now, in fact, as you said, there's so many more people embracing the lifestyle and older as well. And what's intriguing is that I started my coaching business around helping people start traveling. And now I'm getting clients that actually have been out there doing it for a while and are starting to want coaching around the challenges of the lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. Cause that was going to be my, my next uh, kind of question. So, I mean, you, you talk mindset, money, 
mastery or all needed for a full-time uh travel lifestyle so what i mean what what would you say of of these these aspects uh, can contribute to a successful nomadic lifestyle i mean what's what's the formula do you think I don't know that there's a one formula fits all because, and that's kind of where I start from is um, for clients that want to start uh, traveling full time. I like to start by looking at like, what's, how do you like to travel? Because I find people that are older aren't really interested in as much backpacking and staying in youth hostels. Some of us do um, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's really around like, how do you envision your life day to day and starting there? Um, And then we can get into the budgeting, right? And so what's your budget um, and do all the work around like making sure that you have the money and then looking at what an average month might cost realistically so that you understand like if you're like, oh, well, what I like is, you know, five star hotels, Ritz Carlton, you know, whatever. And my budget is a thousand dollars a month. Well, Clearly, that's mm-hmm. not going to work. So, um, so I try to. I think it's important to be realistic about what you want, and then about the budget, um, and also have an idea of how long you want to travel with. And and I think uh, it's important to plan for the fact. I, I I'm not the only one that has gone out there thinking I was going for a finite period of time. And then learning I love the lifestyle and I wanted to keep going. So learning mm. how to maintain the lifestyle is also important financially. Um, and there's other things like, like you were touching on the, you know, the visa types, where are you going? How are you traveling there? Um, and I'll tell you, it like one of the big things, uh, the biggest questions I'm asked are like, how do you afford travel? And then like, worries people have like health insurance um what am i going to do with my stuff that's the biggest and from my point of view um i thought that i was when when i put my stuff in storage you know first i went out for six months then i thought oh i'm going to do another year right so um so i got rid of my apartment put stuff in storage and it's still there and it's you know if i knew that i was going away and not coming back for so long i would have just gotten rid of most of my stuff you know so um so there's just those kinds of things that i think you have to look at first um to start planning for the lifestyle yeah i mean there's a lot of things i mean if if you've got things that you end up putting in a storage for years that end up costing you more in storage than just to replace a lot of it you know then then just sell it and uh buy a whole new stuff when you come back, you know, and not have to worry about storage. Um, And then you touched on the health insurance, which I know is a big thing. And I think, you know, a lot of people don't even think about that. Um, You know, I know in, in, in in Europe and in England in particular, well, the UK in particular, health insurance is, you know, I think it's almost touching on the mandatory uh, before you leave, but I know in America it is voluntary and, and maybe some people don't even know that um, how important it is. Um, so maybe just touch on that as well, like the importance of having health insurance, because if you, if you get in and God forbid, get in an accident or you get really ill, um, you need that insurance when you go to the hospitals. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a big topic of discussion with nomads and, um, I, there's a lot of different opinions on this and I think somewhat it has to do with age. A younger person is just going to be like, I'm young, I don't need it, you know, um, And someone who's a little older is going to be more worried about, well, what if that accident happens? What if, you know, you you want to be covered and if if something unplanned happens. But, you know, the way I do insurance is I have an expat insurance plan that allows me to be covered in America as well as outside of America. And it's for, I'm someone that because I travel all year and I'm going to need to see a dentist, I'm going to need to see a doctor, I'm going to need to see, like, I want to do those annual checkups. I have a plan that allows for that. Whereas other kind, there's also medical insurance where uh, you're just covered for those emergencies, right? So that's another kind of insurance where it's it's you can't go get your annual checkups you can only have those emergency kind of checkups and then there's the people that know that and just bank on the fact that healthcare especially americans um healthcare basically anywhere but america is so much more affordable to begin with yes that um some people don't get insurance they just go and they just because they know that 
Um, and gosh, when I was in New Zealand, um, I was marooned there for the pandemic and I would go see the doctor. It was 90 New Zealand dollars um, per visit because I wasn't a national. It's either free or 30 New Zealand mm. dollars, but it's something like, um, I think, I think it was less than a hundred dollars. Maybe it was 60 or 70 us dollars essentially yes. yeah. in America. A first time consult with a new doctor is a minimum of $250 in New York city. Yeah. Um, and, and then you have your deductible with insurance. So you're paying that out of pocket anyway. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes depending where in the world you're going, um, it's so much less expensive to get healthcare in other countries that you might decide that it's just not even worth paying for the healthcare. Um, and then you just pay full because full price for your medical visits might still be less than yeah, your in, the insurance. monthly payments. So, yeah, yeah, there's there's no right answer. It's really down to your comfort level. Um, I do think repatriation insurance is necessary. Like ex the, the if you have to be um, helicoptered out of a country for emergency purposes, and you you don't want to pay for that out of pocket. So whatever yeah. you do, I would say you at least want to get that coverage. Um, and many plans have it. And then this, the other thing to think about is, and this isn't easy to figure out, but um the the way you know you've got a good plan too is like the when it comes to the claims mm. um how fast are claims process what's customer service like all those things so i would do your research on whatever plan you're looking at try to find someone that has it and um and see if you can get any information on what that process is like so how do you then have the flexibility of of you know traveling and just deciding how long you're going to stay in a place because I heard you touch on obviously when you arrive in a country, they ask you how long are you staying, and they want to see some form of exit, uh, you know, plane, train, or whatever. So when you are planning that, so you you kind of book a flexible ticket out or something along those lines. So what I typically do is I um, research, I, I pick a, a landing spot, and I research whether that country re- requires proof of exit. They don't all. Yeah. Um, for safety, what I've learned is um, where possible, because obviously if you're flying to an island, this is not possible, but where I'm flying to a continent where there's like other land masses close by, I typically will reserve a bus ticket from somewhere in that country to the next country because mm. that's proof of, to immigration that I have yeah. that I'm planning to leave. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and most of the time, I mean, some countries have not required proof of exit. It's been fine. And as long as you're aware that you're only allowed 30 days, like I think Indonesia, you get 30 days or something. So they just, and they, you can renew your 30 days and pay more money and stay longer. Mm. So it's sort of, you got to be um, aware of the proof of exit, the the visa terms and how, the, what the process to renew it is. Some places you can do it while you're there. Other places like Costa Rica, um, when I was there, I think it was 90 days. And then I know people that lived there that had a home there and essentially every 90 days would go exit the country for a day or two and then come back and get a new 90 days. Yeah, um, and yeah. that was their way of just basically living there. Um, so some countries, you know, that's... Yeah, they call them visa runs, and a lot of people do that, yeah. Exactly. So um, I have gotten a couple of eyebrow raises, like when I was, um, I think when I went to, was it Colombia? Um, I'm pretty sure it was Colombia. Um, they were at check-in. They were very perplexed that I had no return ticket. Mm. Um, and that became a topic of discussion and concern, but eventually they let me through. And the other thing is um, I have miles um, and I'm, and I'm like, you know, if you need me to book a ticket, I'll just book the ticket. And then I can right just cancel. Now, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, not that that's the most kosher thing to do, but. No. Um, but yeah. But I mean, of- everybody, it's, it's the way just to show. And, and, and you know, no, no one, no one says it has to be a non-refundable unflexible ticket exactly. out, you know yeah. so you can book as flexible a- as you want so i mean just get getting back to basics here so someone says to you comes to you and says i w- I've, uh, want to quit my job and i want to travel the world and make money while i'm doing it so how how are you making money do i mean do you have like affiliate sites 
you obviously got the coaching business. So how are you sitting now in France actually generating income to fund, you know, six years on the road? I think that would be the first question anybody would ask you for advice. Yeah. So I feel like for myself, I mean, there's buckets. Um, I did manage to save a lot of money before I did this. And I would recommend anyone planning to, you know, thinking of a year or more of this lifestyle, you should have a good savings bucket because, um, now that remote work is much more popular, um, there are, you don't have to quit your job to have this lifestyle. Um, yes. So if you are with a remote job, um, you're probably in a much better, you know, much better shape than a lot of us um, to have reliable income and then possibly not tap into as much of your savings. Um, my savings has been a great backup for, because as an entrepreneur, I'm sure you know, like some months are great, others aren't. Yes. Um, and so having that um, pillow to pad those not as good months is really helpful. Um, I do I do the coaching. I do um, I've done paid speaking. I also um, am a, a travel writer, so I am um, a regular contributor to an online magazine, and I write travel articles that are paid. Um, then I mean. I'm one of those people that also like, you never know. I'm just open to opportunity. Um, went to New Zealand, randomly had dinner out, met the woman at the table next to me um, who actually ended up housing me for a week. Turned out she needed some marketing help and my background is all sales, marketing, customer service. So I, she paid me to help her in her business do some marketing. So yeah. um, there are those like random opportunities that come up. Um, mm. So um, those are a few ways that I generate money. And I think it's very much down to the individual and how you're going to do it. Like, should you quit your job is the first discussion, right? Yes. You know, should, what's your financial situation? like what kind of lifestyle do you want what kind of retirement padding do you have because not i mean there's no point ruining your future um for this lifestyle so i like to set people up to make sure that they've considered um everything and also have consulted like i'm not a financial planner and i don't know everybody's existing financial situation and i do recommend everyone talk like first step go talk to a financial advisor about your individual scenario and what you want to do and have them help you look at what that might look look like. For me, that was one of the most empowering things I did mm. was meeting with a financial advisor who explained what I had, what buckets I would tap into, what this might look like. Um, so that can be a very empowering step. Yeah, I, I, that's a that's a good a good first step. So you you are the founder of Full Time Travelers and Nomads Group on Facebook, yeah. um, and the Expats Coach Association and Directory. So, um, I mean, how important do you think it is to have that um, community? I mean, it seems obvious to me. Yes, it's very important. But, you know, for for those embracing the nomadic lifestyle, um, yeah, I mean, that's just that that community of advice is great. And you have thousands of members of these groups, which obviously means you're doing a great job. So well done. Thank you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when I started that group, I think it was three years ago, I was like, I think it was during the pandemic and I thought, oh my God, you know, I'm, am I the only one out there that's wanting to do this? Um, And I thought I, I, at that point, never had more than 47 people in a group. Like that's like I tried. (laughs) Uh, Yes. Yeah. (laughs) So I got it. So this was really like, all right, if I get like a hundred people, I'll be really excited. Um, And I ended up now we're almost 7,000 people and it's um, it's a great mix of people that want to start traveling and others who are already living the lifestyle and the goal of my group is to create community for both. Um, I think that the full-time travelers, naturally, we want to um, possibly meet up in other places in the world and know that um, it's it's a very comforting conversation when you talk to someone else that's living this lifestyle that just gets it. Um, in fact, I met this couple in my Facebook group in um, South Korea this year, so you know, you never know, like you're meeting someone for the first time, you've seen their little picture on Facebook and you've exchanged a couple of words, but you never know how it's going to go. And we meet for a coffee and we each go and order our coffees and we sit down at the table. And um, the first thing that um, we all did was log the expense um, in our each of whatever way, you know, and it's like, we're like, oh, you get it. Like, yeah, like every expense gets tracked. 
you know, yeah. and longed. So, um, so it's very cool. It's like, okay, I don't have to feel like a nerd about it. I'm like, all right, you get it, you do it too. So, yeah. um, so, you know, I think being able to have that ideally meet up in real life, but also I do, um, calls on the group when I can, we just did one this week where just a virtual zoom, um, where we can just chat with each other and get to know each other a little bit better, um, which was also a fun way to get to plug into different topics people are thinking about mm. that can then become posts in the group to help people more on, you know, in a new direction. So, um, and it's been fun. Like I started the group out with like every, I was giving away tons of tips at the beginning. And now there's this whole catalog of past tips um, that people can research um, and then now it's just sort of like getting engagement. And what I love is just seeing all the questions come in mm, yeah. um, that people have about, about health insurance, about getting started, about traveling with kids, with traveling with pets, all kinds of things. So it's, um, it's just a really um, nice thing to see the group growing and more questions coming in. Yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, everybody, everybody, I think the word influence has become a bit of a taboo word now. Nobody likes to hear I'm an influencer because they're like, well, who are you influencing? Because, you know, yeah. it's, um, uh, yeah. So I think the word influencer has almost become, uh, yeah, uh, it, as I say, like a taboo word. Certainly it raises eyebrows and I think people have just heard it too much and very skeptical of that word. So, but, there are people making money out of social media and TikToks and Instagrams and, and YouTube videos, um, especially for travel. Um, you know, people have got a lot of following. Um, you know, we know, our, uh, the, the lovely ladies from where to next y'all, we met them and they, they're doing a great job in building up a lovely they number of, of followers. And yeah, I mean, their, their videos are great and they seem to have got, got the knack, knack, knack of it quite quick. Um, but for those who may be disillusioned that you, you can make a fortune out of, out of videos such as that. Um, I mean, what advice would you give those, those people? I mean, it's, it's, it's almost pennies sometimes, isn't it? Pennies that, that you make uh, per video. It yeah. is. I mean, so, um, it took me like three years to, um, get to the point on YouTube where I am now, I got the thousand subscribers and I finally entered their partner program, like just a month ago. Yeah. Um, and I'm only at the first threshold. I still need like 700 more watch hours to get into the paid advertising tier. Mm. But um, at the beginning, so getting a thousand subscribers was the biggest deal in the world to me. And I was obsessed with it until yeah. I learned I also needed the watch hours. And then I was like, oh, my God, none of this matters and I meet people along the way that have, you know, 10,000 subscribers, 20,000 subscribers. They're in the partner program on YouTube and they're getting like $50 a month, $100 a month. I mean, it's next to nothing. And I would say, um, you know, as a solo traveler, it's I do everything myself. And it mm. it's just too much work at a certain point to be For sure. Able to yeah. Um, so, so I'd say if you're wanting to use social media to monetize, I would say, understand it's a long path. Um, I do think that younger people have a slight edge, um, just naturally. I don't know if that's that we like to look at them better on camera or what it is, but, um, there is, there is that advantage. I also think no matter what your what your age is, if you have a natural edge, like some really big quirk or something really different, that will set you apart. And I think if you have that and you can lead with that, you might be really successful really quickly. Um, if you're traveling in a couple or a group, again, you can share the work. And then that also, you know, where to next to y'all, there's two of them, which is great because, and they play off each other really well. And, and their yeah. videos work because each of them knows their expertise um, and uses that and leverages that. And it's like, and then they work, you know, the videos out really fast and they're fun. They're really fun. So, mm. um, so I think, and if you are going to do something, I'd say, um, try out like different social channels and see where you enjoy because each of them has a different way of posting a different format for the videos um sometimes i think you can make um a long like a you know the um the long form video or the short you know the shorts 
um, sometimes can translate to different platforms, but sometimes they don't. Mm. Um, and so I think it's a matter of like when you post stuff, how many followers suddenly, who's commenting, who's following, who's interested? Um, are you getting sponsorships? Um, because like in my Facebook group, I actually got a sponsor who paid to advertise in the group. And also we're willing to do it in a way that wasn't like, hey, buy our service at $75. It was like, <laughs> yes. helpful. let's give you helpful information. And by the way, if you want to learn more about us, click here. Um, so that's for my group, how I like to do it. But but I receive money for that. Mm. Um, so I think it's important. Um, sponsorships are nice, but I, I feel like as a traveler, if someone wants to send me uh, oh, we love your stuff. Let us send you a whole bunch of gifts so you can promote them on your channel. I'll be like, well, number one, I don't want to carry lots of stuff. So that's mm. really a pain in my neck. Um, number two, um, I'd rather have money. So, you know, yeah. like, let's see how you can fund my travels and I can fund your business. You know? yes, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, personally. So I think these are things you have to think about um, and, and sponsorships and um, leveraging social media sounds fun if you're not doing it, but I'll tell you from experience, it is a lot of hard work and yeah. it's not always so fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, w winning the lottery in, 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 a, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what is, what do you think has been your proudest moment as a coach? Can you single out one particular instance where you've kind of seen a, a caterpillar or turn into a butterfly or whatever? <laughs> well, I mean, like I've been coaching since 2008 and I'd say generally speaking, um, you know, I've done life coaching, business coaching, now full-time travel coaching. Um, there have been clients that just really astounded me um, with, you know, when they came to me, they were in one place and when they left, they were like a totally different person. Mm. Um I had a business coach who, a business client, coaching client who, um, I was actually almost surprised she hired me because she really was next. To, she had next to no money, um, but she um, she trusted in me, and I kept telling her like I actually every time we met, I'm like I feel like I see you as this person, and I feel like she's right here next to me. So if you can just trust that I'm standing here with this version of yourself waiting mm. for you to step into it mm. um and that's what happened and it was like wow like the difference was amazing and then she went on to become a very successful coach um so and then the um the travel coaching looking at a client who comes in thinking okay heather well i'm going to be honest with you like i'm doing this but i'm doing it kind of with a grain of salt because like i have wanted to do this but i don't really think it's possible and um the takeaway you know the commentary that i've had like oh my god like i i never sat down and looked at this logistically and and with structure and now that i have Oh, like I get it. Now I believe I can do this. Like you've yeah. totally changed my whole perspective on the lifestyle. Um, mm. And that's really refreshing. So, um, you know, and, and anytime a client like comes to me with a, with a problem and I can help them find, a, you know, some other way to navigate it and turn it into an opportunity and they walk away feeling like, oh, like I've, I've embraced this. You've, you know, you've helped me really change how I'm doing things. Um, that's really refreshing to me. I mean, I just, I, I feel like my success is really about my client's success. So, mm. um, you know, if they experience that, I, that makes me feel wonderful. Yeah. For, yeah. I mean, it's, of course it's, it's, uh, we all have that feeling when you help somebody and you, and you get this smile on their face and knowing that you put it there. It's a, it's a great, uh, great feeling. So yeah. there, I mean, there'd be a lot of trepidation for people wanting to do what you do, but, what are the kind of main advantages if they're not too obvious to everybody? What would you say is like, you definitely have to consider this lifestyle because of it's, you know, amazing because of what? So there's a lot. Um, I think one of the big things that I wasn't expecting was, um, so I did a TEDx talk and I talk about how um, this lifestyle is to me like an adult vision quest. Mm. And I really wasn't expecting that. I thought I was going to do six months of, 
travel the world and you know whatever um what i found was um you know after the first two weeks um when you suddenly realize oh I'm not on vacation. I'm not going back to work. What am I doing? Um, mm. There's there's an inward journey that happens, and for me, that was very intense. My first year of travel, and um, it's I've I've said before on other podcasts, like this is not a lifestyle if you're running away from something, because it will catch up with you as you go. And so um, there was a lot of. Um, personal difficulties in my life that um, kept coming up as I traveled. And I'm like, I can't believe this situation is happening again. Why? Mm. Um, And so um, I realized that I was being given this opportunity to ask why and to see what my role was in it and what I needed to shift. And so it was really hard. Um, It was not fun, um, but Yet, yet, I think in one year of full-time travel, um, I accomplished more personally than I ever did in my professional career. And I did more. I mean, there's the inward journey. There were things like um, stepping outside my comfort zone in ways I would never have done if I kept my corporate job. Um, so I think there's that one of the big reasons to do the travel is to find out who are you and what are mm. you really need of? Because man, you will figure that out, um, over and over again, as you are repeatedly confronted with different cultures, different ways of being, um, less, especially if you're from a Western culture and you go into other ones, you know, there's, they just don't have what we have. Um, so you can scream all you want, but they don't have it. So mm. learning to adapt, um, make friends um, in new cultures is amazing. Uh, I also think our world is so strange lately. Um, and I think there's so much fear um, that's cultivated through media and stories. And um, what I've loved is being able to travel and see that um, the world is not exactly like it is portrayed in the media and um, how you can understand wherever you're, you are in the world right now listening to this, that you know your home. You know that um, one, like, like there's this dangerous area across the street. You don't go there. Um, you also know that if there's um, like your town or city is safe, um, but there's like this this suburb that um, is not as safe, so you don't go there. And so when you hear about an incident in that suburb, you're not worried about life in your city. Mm. What happens when you think of other places is like when I was in Rio, I was told Rio de Janeiro was really dangerous. And I'm like, well, I'm not feeling it. Mm. Um and they told me that there's like the favelas, but they aren't really in Rio. They're kind of on the outskirts of Rio, but because Rio is so close to them, um, if you're not in Rio and you've never been there, it just gets lumped in as Rio is dangerous, but it's it's not all dangerous. Mm. Um, and I've even seen people that have like lived in the favelas and actually had amazing experiences. I'm not recommending that, I'm just saying, yeah. Um, there's a million and one perspectives out there. And so as a traveler, I think I've learned to um, just be wiser on the fact that like the people of a country are not the government of a country. And too much of what we hear in the media has been somewhat tainted by a government, you know, need to um, portray a country in a good or a bad light, you know. And so but go there for yourself and find out for yourself what what a place is really like because you may be really pleasantly surprised um, by the people of a country and be treated to experiences that you just can't even dream of or think of if you don't go and travel and have this lifestyle. Yeah. So we're definitely going to get you to know Eastern Southern Africa a lot more. Um, yes. So we, we're going to work on that in the next few months Please. to get you back. Um, yes. um, and so where, where, where are you off to next? You're in Paris, France now. Yes. Uh, so I am meeting my mom in a few days and we are going to head to Malta. Um, oh, and yes, yes. Yeah. So um, hopefully also um, over to Sicily 
Um, and then we'll be back in the U S and then, um, typically I try to spend the holidays with my, with my family and then probably looking at South America again next year to go and, um, there's some of Central America and, and then I want to, I haven't seen like Mexico, Guatemala, um, those countries. And I would like to get back to Argentina and see more of it. So, Mm. um, I'm starting to blend like my first few years, I was just obsessed with only going new places that mm. I hadn't been before. Um, and now I'm starting to sort of do a blend of new and returning um, just to see um, other, just to deepen my experience um, with the same culture. Yeah. And, I, and I've also got the the great guys at uh, Incoming India who can help you with India, Nepal, Bhutan, all great places like that, yeah, Sri Lanka. Right. Yeah, yeah, so um, Bhutan is a, is a looks like a great country. I haven't been there yet, but that's a kind of country that's on the bucket list of most people. I think. Uh, yes. Very, very kind of. I think they only they have a very strict visa system, so it's kind of like you're a part of the club if you get to go to Bhutan, and you'll yeah. have a great time in Malta. I had one of the best seafood pizzas I've ever eaten there. And, really? Uh, yes. Yeah, and I think it's uh, I can't remember the harbor now, but. Uh, yeah, they've got some great, uh, great um, food there. And then um, you must have researched the the fabulous Blue Lagoon, um, which is on Gozo. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we're going to Gozo too. So yes. Yeah. yeah. So Gozo, the Blue Lagoon is stunning. I mean, it's it like a the water is like a swimming pool. It's it's fantastic. So you got to get there oh. and spend a few hours there. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mal- Malta is great, and then Sicily is also great. So, I've been there too, just for a weekend, but it was, it was good. Um, so yeah, I mean, Heather, thanks so much for, for joining us on the podcast and I'll put all your details and all the links to your fabulous groups, uh, online and you can, Great. um, yeah, you can hopefully help out a lot more people in the journey of this great planet that we've all been born into and have to experience. That's great. Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, thanks very much, Heather, and and hopefully we'll see you in person again um, soon. I'm sure we will. Yes, I'm sure you will. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Heather. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning into KuzaCast, where we explore the world of tourism with leaders from all corners of the globe. Join me, Graham Watson, for future episodes as we dive into the latest trends and insights from the industry. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a rating, and we'll see you next time on KuzaCast.